Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this video I want to show how and why to do color calibration using the Spider X Pro. Now you might have recalled from uh, earlier videos, I kind of mentioned this, I definitely talk about it in the books, but it's something where if you're going to be doing pro work you definitely want to have your monitor calibrated. It used to be mostly for print requirements that you want to make sure that when you send your photos off to a printer that they're going to look like they do when they're on one of your monitors. So in today's day and age of being digital, a lot of people overlook that because, well, every monitor is going to look different, every phone is going to look different, but a lot of those are fairly well calibrated. In fact, the BenQ monitors that I have right here are really pretty much spot on, but there's still some difference. So it's good to have one common standard. And as you know from other videos, I have two monitors here because I typically use two workstations. One's always a backup, but sometimes if I have rendering going on on one, I can do photo editing on the other. So anyways, I have two standards that I can use to compare Spider 5, which is over on this one, and Spider X Pro, which is on this. So full disclosure, Data Color reached out to me a couple months ago and said, hey, would you be interested in getting the new Data Color Spider X and giving us a review on it? So I was a little bit hesitant because I already have some pretty good calibration going on, but I thought this would be good to be able to show everybody why to do the calibration and how simple it is and is this really much of a benefit. So I found kind of cutting to the chase on this, it's a good calibration tool, but there are some caveats with it, some things to be aware of. So I'm going to step through what this is, how to use it, some of the benefits from it, and then is it really one of my recommendations. So cutting to the to chase real quick, is it one of my recommendations? Absolutely. If you have a Spider 5, you still may want to think about upgrading the Spider X, but I don't say that you'd have to do that. If you aren't doing any monitor calibration yet, I would definitely recommend getting a Spider X. There's a link down in the description for the video so you can check out more information on that. But let's step through this uh, just step by step how the calibration is done so you can get an idea how simple it is and then kind of the results that you'll see after. So the first thing you would do then after you uh, have you've gotten your Spider X or your Spider 5, whatever one you're working with, we're going to use the Spider X Pro here. As you download the software uh, from Data Color, and once it's installed, then you can launch this. So th this is the calibration tool. It's very very simple to use, but there are some confusing things in it, and especially when it came to this over top of using the Spider 5. Now I'd used older Spiders also in the past. I'm I'm kind of addicted to data color products anyways. They just do it right. They've been around forever. They just know what they're doing. So anyways, as it first comes up, it's going to give you some steps to make sure that you're, you've got your monitor warmed up, you've got the lighting conditions you're normally using, and then of course some of the display controls. And if you hover over each one of these, it talks about it over to the right. They make it fairly uh, just pretty much foolproof on and fail safe on how to do this. One of the things you have to be aware of, a lot of people aren't aware, is that the color temperature on the monitor is typically set to 6500 Kelvin. Now we may be used to shooting outdoors at 5,000, 5,500 Kelvin and uh, so it might be confusing but most monitors are 6500 Kelvin. So anyways, this just gives you an overview so you can learn more about it. You can also uh, learn more about it by clicking this link and you go out to Spider's website. So the next step during this process this was the confusing part. This is what was different from Spider X to Spider 5 in that they wanted me to select the backlighting for this display. Now, I felt that Data Color could have probably just defaulted to general, which you see is here, selected, because that's what I actually selected. When this first came up, when I first installed it, it was selected to wide LED. And I tried that and the, uh, the profile turned out way too green. I had way too many greens in it. I quite honestly didn't know what my backlighting was on this BenQ monitor. I didn't want to research it. I just wanted to calibrate my monitor real quick. So I used General and it did give me then very similar results to the Spider 5, which is on the other workstation. So anyways, my recommendation, if you don't know what's going on, and they even say way down here on the third item that common monitors fall under this category. So 
something to be aware of. If you do know the backlighting, great. I really don't think this is all that necessary. I just want to know the color. Am I, are my colors correct? So I did reach back out to data color. Um, they said they would pass this along to their engineers. We'll see if that goes anywhere. But anyways, I did not like this feature of it, but it's not something that would stop me from using the Spider X Pro. Just be aware of it. When you get to this portion, select general if you are not sure. Then the next thing is, do you want to do just a recalibration? Do you want to check the calibration for your accuracy? Or do you want to do a full calibration? So here we'll do a full calibration. You can see that I last calibrated this just a few days ago. And uh, I have a profile name on here that I used. And if you notice, it says 2.ICM on my profile because the first one just didn't work very well at all because I had the wrong backlighting uh, selected here. So what we want to do though is in here, the settings are usually are a gamma 2.2, white point once again 6500K, and I do not like to change these adjustments. Now you can change these settings, and they'll come up here usually as the first time that you have to do this. Most monitors have a gamma setting of 2.2, it's what they recommend also. It's one of those settings on your monitor itself when you go through the monitors on menu. Also the white point of 6500 Kelvin, and for me, I don't like to adjust the brightness. I know what my eyes are used to seeing. Now, it can be useful, once again, to have a calibration on this, but let me give you an example. If you're, if you're used to using your iPhone and you're, you go from room to room or something, you notice that uh, the dimness changes. If that annoys you, this will too. It annoys me, so I don't change it. I know how bright my monitor should be from looking at my portfolio work. I even compare it to some of my print work. Don't need it. And the room light, I just keep that off. Now, the Spider X. Uh, has a nice little, uh, and I'll show it here in a minute, uh, little sensor on the outside to measure the room light, but I just don't find that necessary. Anyways, so once we have all those settings set, and we want to do the full calibration on that, then the next thing is where um, it's telling you then, Okay, now you've selected this, you need to set the desired white point. And they tell you it's like it's pretty foolproof, like I said. You go into your menus and you set that white point to 6500 Kelvin. And the same thing would be also for your gamma. Next step then would be the calibration part of it, and that's then when this comes up. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Spider X, because at this point, it wants you to place it on the monitor before you hit next. So let's zoom in a little bit, take a look at the Spider X itself, and then how to properly mount it on your monitor. So if we take a close look here at the Data Color Spider X, it's just a very simple device. You can see it's about the shape of what we're going to be placing on there. One of the confusing parts with a lot of new users with this is how to actually dis disassemble this. And it's got a little cover on the back here. That's the sensor that will be facing the monitor. And you need to hang this over the monitor. And to do that, you need to pull the cable through. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pull that cable through and then mount this onto the monitor. So I've got enough of that out there, and then you place this on the monitor like that, and then you need to plug this into a USB port on here. Now I've got a USB port that's uh, on a cable. I like to keep it up here by my desktop and uh, wherever you can reach to it, and then I just plug that in there and then we'd be good to go. So that's all there is to it. Now what uh, Spider X Pro, the software does, is it centers that window right over the center of the screen. So once you have that in place, it needs to be fairly accurate. You can see there's the sensor on the outside, which would be measuring the amount of light that we're coming in. Since I have this lit up right now with some LED lights for, uh, for recording this for the video, um, that wouldn't be accurate anyways, but we didn't choose that. So then all that you do is you'd click then next, on there, and then you're going to see a whole bunch of colors start changing. It does measuring. Now, the one thing I liked during this process, where it's actually now doing the calibration for the color, is that it was faster than when I'd used the Spider 5. So definitely more efficient um, on doing this, but you know, this is something you do once a year, once every few months. The time isn't really that big of a consideration, but I thought it was definitely uh, faster, so I liked that. And I did find it to be just a little bit more 
accurate than the Spider 5. Now that could have just been also chance settings, you know, looking at it back and forth between this and the other monitor. But as you can see, you just kind of let this thing go. It's got a little progress bar down at the bottom that's going on. You can cancel it if you want to, but what it's doing while it's taking all these color measurements is it's going to be saving a profile. It's a file that then on startup, when you start up your computer, um, it will then load into the uh, video card that you have. This, uh, these monitors have uh, NVIDIA GeForce uh, cards and that gets loaded into there. Sometimes it takes about a minute after uh, your computer boots up to see that load, but you can see a difference. And I'll show you some of the difference here in just a second. But you can see here now it's all complete and it just wants me to click finish. So now that it's finished, and that's all done. Now we can take a look at the rest of the process. All right, so now we take the Spider X Pro off of the screen, and this is then the final portion to save the profile. So it's gonna ask you for a profile name, and you can name it whatever. I'm gonna call this Rev3, since this is the third time that I've done it. You can set then a reminder calibration, whatever you'd like to do, but then you just save that profile. So when you go to the next uh, button here, then you can switch back and forth to see how this looks. So we can turn the calibration off, and this is then with the calibration on. Another way to do this too, um, once you're done with this, is down here in the uh, in your toolbar, then you have the ability to turn it off and on. But we're, you need to finish this and have this app done. So let's just, we can move it off to the side, check the colors here, see if that looks accurate. So we'll just click Next. Now it gives you some information information here about the profile overview, um, what you were doing. Uh, this, in this case, it's 100% sRGB. That's also what I set my BenQ monitors for. And yes, I know I can do Adobe RGB, but I work in the digital world. And uh, so really it's sRGB across the board to be completely compatible. So that's what I do. So then we just need to quit. You're all done. Now we can see that the profile is loaded. If you want to see the before and after at any time, you click that little uh, spider icon down there in the toolbar and you can just say calibration off and you get to see what it looks like. You can then go calibration on to toggle back and forth and see the difference. And that's really all there is to it. Now every time that you start up the computer, that calibration will first come up off. So when you first start up your computer, you're going to see your colors as they would be without any adjustments uh, from the spider. And then after a little while, you get up a little pop-up dialogue and you'll see your colors then change to what they should be. If you're ever in doubt though, you just go down here to the toolbar and then toggle that on or off. You ever need to do uh, other, cal other calibration, you just can launch the Spider X Pro from that menu as well. And that brings up that app where we started this whole thing of doing the calibration where you want to make sure you're warmed up and all that as well. Well, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.